His best-known work is his three-volume A History of the Crusades. Biography Born in Northumberland, he was the second son of Walter Runciman, first Viscount Runciman of Doxford, and Hilda Runciman, Viscountess Runciman of Doxford. Both of his parents were or became members of Parliament for the Liberal Party. His father was created Viscount Runciman of Doxford in 1937. His paternal grandfather, Walter Runciman, first Baron Runciman, was a shipping magnate. He was named after his maternal grandfather, James Cochrane Stevenson, the MP for South Shields. It is said that he was reading Latin and Greek by the age of five. In the course of his long life he would master an astonishing number of languages, so that, for example, when writing about the Middle East, he relied not only on accounts in Latin and Greek and the Western vernaculars, but consulted Arabic, Turkish, Persian, Hebrew, Syriac. Armenian and Georgian sources as well. A King's Scholar at Eton College, he was an exact contemporary and close friend of George Orwell. While there, they both studied French under Aldous Huxley. In 1921 he entered Trinity College of Cambridge University as a history scholar and studied under J.B. Berry, becoming, as Runciman later commented, his first, and only, student. At first, the reclusive Berry tried to brush him off then, when Runciman mentioned that he could read Russian. Berry gave him a stack of Bulgarian articles to edit, and so their relationship began. His work on the Byzantine Empire earned him a fellowship at Trinity in 1927. After receiving a large inheritance from his grandfather, Runciman resigned his fellowship in 1938 and began traveling widely. From 1942 to 1945 he was professor of Byzantine art and history at Istanbul University, in Turkey, where he began the research on the Crusades which would lead to his best-known work, The History of the Crusades. Most of Runciman's historical works deal with Byzantium and her medieval neighbors between Sicily and Syria, one exception is the White Rajas. Published in 1960, which tells the story of Sarawak, an independent state founded on the northern coast of Borneo in 1841 by an Englishman James Brooke, and ruled by the Brooke family for more than a century. In his personal life, Runciman was an old-fashioned English eccentric, known, among other things, as an aesthete, raconteur, and enthusiast of the occult. According to Andrew Robinson, a history teacher at Eton, he played piano duets with the last emperor of China, told tarot cards for King Fuad of Egypt, narrowly missed being blown up by the Germans in the Pera Palace Hotel in Istanbul and twice hit the jackpot on slot machines in Las Vegas. He died in Radway, Warwickshire, while visiting relatives, aged 97. He was interred in Lockerbie, Dumfriesshire. Assessment. Peters says that Runciman's three-volume narrative history instantly became the most widely known and respected single-author survey of the subject in English. Riddle says that for the greater part of the 20th century Runciman was the greatest historian of the Crusades. He reports that, prior to Runciman, in the early part of the century, Historians related the Crusades as an idealistic attempt of Christendom to push Islam back. Runciman regarded the Crusades as a barbarian invasion of a superior civilization, not that of the Muslims but of the Byzantines. Madden stresses the impact of Runciman's style and viewpoint. It is no exaggeration to say that Runciman single-handedly crafted the current popular concept of the Crusades. The reasons for this are twofold. First, he was a learned man with a solid grasp of the chronicle sources. Second, and perhaps more important, he wrote beautifully. The picture of the Crusades that Runciman painted owed much to current scholarship yet much more to Sir Walter Scott. Throughout his history Runciman portrayed the Crusade as a simpletons or barbarians seeking salvation through the destruction of the sophisticated, 
cultures of the East. In his famous summing up of the Crusades he concluded that the Holy War in itself was nothing more than a long act of intolerance in the name of God, which is a sin against the Holy Ghost. Vaughan says, Runciman's three-volume history of the Crusades remains the primary standard of comparison. However Vaughan claims that Tyreman, accurately, if perhaps with a bit of hubris, notes that Runciman's work is now outdated and seriously flawed, but Tyreman himself has said, it would be folly and hubris to pretend to compete, to match, as it were, my clunking computer keyboard with his, Runciman's pen, at once a rapier and a paintbrush, to pit one volume. However substantial, with the breadth, scope and elegance of his three honours, streets in Mistras, Greece and Sofia, Bulgaria were named in his honour, works, the Emperor Romanus Lecapinus in his reign, the first Bulgarian Empire, Byzantine civilization, the medieval Manichae, a study of the Christian dualist heresy, a history of the Crusades, Volume 1, The First Crusade and the Foundation of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, A History of the Crusades, Volume 2, The Kingdom of Jerusalem and the Frankish East, A History of the Crusades, Volume 3, The Kingdom of Acre and the Later Crusades, The Eastern Schism, A Study of the Papacy and the Eastern Churches during the 11th and 12th centuries, The Sicilian Vespers, a History of the Mediterranean World in the Later 13th Century, The White Rajas, The Fall of Constantinople 1453, The Great Church in Captivity, The Last Byzantine Renaissance, The Orthodox Churches and the Secular State, Sir Stephen Runciman, The Empress Irene, Conspectus of History 1.1, 1.11, 1 Byzantine Style and Civilization, Sir Stephen Runciman, Balkan Cities, Yesterday and Today, Conspectus of History 1.4, 1-12, The Byzantine Theocracy, Mistra, Byzantine Capital of the Peloponnese, A Traveler's Alphabet, Partial Memoirs, 